day three over here at Shriner Tree Care. This is something that's kind of interesting. So it's like chip trucks, bucket trucks, and this is plant health care stuff right here, which is fascinating to me because we don't have plant health care as the industry where I live, generally speaking. Out here, they deal with a lot of different pests and stuff, you know? They have tons of different diseases and pests, you know, like spotted lanternfly and probably Dutch elm disease and the emerald ash borer. So the plant health care is a big industry out here. I think they have six trucks. I don't know what the deal is, but in the Seattle area, I think we have one or two companies, like I think Bartlett, maybe Davey, and a couple companies have a couple spray rigs. It's really not a thing where I live just because we don't really have any pests. Everything just grows really well. We get so much rain and I, I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, this might be something for me to do more research on sometime because it's really fascinating. They want to preserve their trees, you know? So like I said, it's just a, it's a big part of what Shriner Tree Care does. And it's just fascinating to me because this is something that's totally alien to me just because it's just not, there's just not much of an industry for it where I live. So I'm not working with the plant health care. I'm actually going back with Keith today to the same job site to finish the job we started yesterday i just thought it was cool another some other cool stuff here look at this. they've got four-wheel drive bucket trucks some are two-wheel drive some are four-wheel drive look how high that thing is it's really cool i think my favorite thing is just all the big the big chippers that they've got they got like so many big chippers this this company has a lot of really cool stuff definitely the most impressive tree service i've worked at honestly it's very impressive how much nice equipment they have how many professional guys they have these guys are really legit Everybody here says they love working here. They've got great benefits. It's just a really formidable company. It's really impressive. They, they fill all the trucks on site. And yeah, like I said, I'm just impressed with everything here. Okay, so we're back here today. Simple job, simple video. We're gonna bring this down to the height of where that light was. Bring that one down a little lower. And then we're gonna safety prune some of the trees around here. And then we're, we're getting the wood out with that bobcat. So simple day, nothing too fancy. It is already hot. A lot hotter in Pennsylvania in the summer than it is in Hawaii, it turns out. <laughs> it's like 7.30 in the morning. This is what it feels like in the afternoon in Hawaii. I don't know exactly what the temperature is, but it is hot and it's super humid. So I think we're gonna kind of take it a little bit easy today. Another weird thing about this place, they have a ton of Japanese maples. It's really bizarre because we also, the Japanese maples also do really well where I live, you know, by Seattle. And it's the only tree that's really the same where I live. The, all the species here are different, but the Japanese maples do really well in both places, which I just find kind of, strange that these little trees do well in both places and all the other species are different i don't know it's just kind of neat this is a lace leaf japanese maple and this is a red japanese maple acer palmatum acer palmatum dissectum because they have dissected leaves Okay, so first off, we've got this, just this little hickory I'm gonna cut down, and then they're gonna move that wood. Then I'm gonna finish chunking that stuff, and then we'll see what time it is, and if I hop up in one of these tall trees, Keith is gonna go up that tree and do a safety prune, you know, removing dead wood and hazardous stuff. These poplars are interesting because they're, they're kind of brittle, but people still like them, and they wanna preserve them, so they prune these a lot. The wood's real similar to our black cottonwoods, but nobody prunes those, they just cut them down. Nobody likes them. The two poplars are kind of pretty. I'm really liking these. Lineman Boots from JK Boots. You can get a pair, use code TREASON at checkout for $20 off your JK Boots. Let's so have a boot again with a real nice steel shank. And there's also a leather shank, and I think there's one more in there actually. Yeah, you can really feel how hard this wood is when you spike into it. Yeah, that is really hard wood. That's so weird. I was not expecting that to pinch my bar. What is going on with this? Why would that pinch my bar? It's so weird. What the heck? Dude, the wood is just so strong. It just grabbed my bar. Ugh. 
forgot my handsaw. Oh, man. Dude, there's no tree in Washington would have grabbed my bar like that, cutting from the top down. But it like started to split and fracture, and this part just caught my tip of my bar. It's so insane. Weird wood. Wow. Wow. This dude is hard to spike. What a weird tree. Well, it's dead, but I'm guessing I can go up there because <laughs> it's hard as a rock. It's amazing how much variety there is in tree species, you know, like how they react when you cut them. You really can't wrap your mind around it until you really work on them, you know? hinge like crazy you know what's really crazy is i was trying to just cut some of the branches just from the top down yeah. and they start to like split and like pinch my saw yeah like it... yeah they're just so i don't know what the deal is it was crazy i i like pinched my bar pretty bad i was not expecting to but i couldn't cut through it fast enough or something yeah i can imagine the storm damage ones would be a nightmare am i clear I know it's not OSHA approved, like cutting and doing this, but like I feel safer doing this than just making an arbitrary snap cut. You know, sometimes I'll do the snap cuts because like this, this company doesn't want me doing unsafe practices, right? While I'm filming and stuff. What company would, but, and they haven't told me not to cut in any particular way, but just to the greater point, it's like, I feel safe doing this. Like I know where the tip of my bar is. Well, it's way out here with that saw. <laughs> but like, you know, I'm cutting and I'm pushing so I don't pinch my bar and then the bar pops out and I've, I've got actually pretty good control of the piece, even just holding it like this, you know? I do a snap cut, it's all jiggling and stuff. I just, I feel safe when I'm doing this. Sometimes you go against the rules and yeah, I don't know. I feel safe. I should have double tied in, I guess, but it's, it's steel core too. It's pretty cut resistant. That wood is so heavy. That's insane. I don't know, I try to be reasonably safe, you know? Like, I, I do take this stuff seriously. I got to get some stuff done too sometimes, you know? And sometimes I feel like I try to go by the book and it's more dangerous. Like, pushing on the top as you cut it, like, I feel like that's safer sometimes than just hoping it goes the right way, you know? <laughs> a lot faster than setting a rope and everything. <laughs> saw is working hard my chain is i think i hit something in here what's weird is these little holes right here fill up with sawdust and it never it doesn't ever bother my saw usually but when i'm cutting the hickory the hickory clogs that and i actually have some resistance i don't know what the deal is but these holes are actually a nuisance when i get the hickory chips in there i pull the saw out a little bit and the chips fall through and i go back in but if i'm cutting like a fur or something i don't even notice those little holes <laughs> Man, look at that thing go. 
No marks on the grass. Yeah, I actually don't think I was hitting metal. I think it was just this hole was plugged up. So it felt like it. That's why I could cut with the tip, but not this part. Bizarre. Lots of little quirks and details of every species, you know? Like that ranch pinch me was unexpected. This flogging was unexpected. Dude, the, this tree is rock hard spiking into it. It's actually kind of uncomfortable spiking that. Like didn't really feel secure. is that running right my screaming eagle Pennsylvania right where the Revolutionary War happened to just have a longer bar to go all the way through but this is cutting really well i'd rather have a shorter bar with a really sharp chain i brought this one from home to the square ground yeah i like long bars but the, the chain is really the most important thing and now that i run square ground chain i uh really don't almost wish i never would have tried it because now when i run round filed chainsaws it's just not as satisfying as it used to be <laughs> kind of spoiled it's the same thing running ported saws now that i run ported saws when i run stock ones it's not as enjoyable it's aimed kind of at that tree but it leans this way, so I think it'll land with those logs. I hope so. You want to pull straight back or do you want to pull that way? Straight back. My bar is pretty short, so I'll cut this side and then I'm going to spin over and get the other side and then I'll tell them to pull. That was awesome. You put those logs in the perfect spot. About two feet from the asphalt. Okay. I think I'm gonna make this cut last in case there's metal in there. Moving really slow so we don't get overheated. Man, sorry about that. Two feet too far away. Yeah. Here is how you tie a running bowline. Put a line around the tree. This works really well from the ground too. Just make a loop, go around. Bunny goes up the hole, around the tree, back down the hole. And it cinches like that. No matter how tight it gets, it always breaks right here. Really easy to untie. This part's a bowline. The fact that the rope is running through it makes it a running bowline. One of you guys want to get this uh, out of my way, then I'll cut my notch. 
Every time I post a, a video cutting wood, I get East Coast guys saying, yeah, try that on our hardwoods, talking about my square ground chain. Well, I'm on the East Coast and this is Hickory. <laughs> as it gets all right so I'm gonna go up this poplar just to sort of elevate it and prune it looking for any dead or hazardous stuff this morning Keith threw a line in there with this throw ball the other end is anchored to that tree I'm gonna send it's been I don't really rope box that often so I mostly do removals but this is what I use it's the it's just the petzl setup and then I'm using the uh, the Petzl Sequoia as well. And the cool thing about this knee ascender is this part right here acts as a chest tether, so it goes over your shoulder, so you actually don't need a chest harness or anything to use this. It's just really simple. It compacts really well into that little bag. The cool thing about the akimbo is when it's clipped to your chest, you know, you are like advancing the rope on your chest, and then when you sit down, it comes undone. The idea is you know, that this long, weird one is for the left knee, it's a knee ascender, and that compact one is a right foot ascender or foot panting. So I'm just gonna walk up there. Turn this real quick. Pretty straightforward. Okay, I got some hangers. Usually I use this one just for fine pruning, but it's actually better for traveling because it's small. It's a silky tsurugi, one of the littler ones. It actually works really great. I actually think it's quite nice and compact. So I leapfrog, lanyard, throw my climbing line, lanyard in, throw my climbing line up, and I alternate, but if I cut, I have both tied into the tree. So I'm just advancing my line here. It's actually really nice to be pruning a big tree instead of chucking wood in the sun. The nice thing about pruning is you're always in the shade. Hey! All right, it's time to go down. If it runs well, I'll switch to my front D's. They're, just, they're better for like weird, funky work positioning, and then the side D's are better for square work. So to prevent peeling, to make a cleaner cut, they recommend you do bottom cut and then top cut. I just cut it out here sometimes and just let it peel. And then I just clean up the stub because it doesn't weigh nothing. You can just cut right through it. It's not going to peel. 
think I need to read Tyan. I'm, I'm not going to make it to the ground because this rope's 150, 150 feet long, so I can technically double line down 75 feet. I think I'm, I'm sure I'm higher than 75 feet where I'm tied in, so I need to read Tyan here. All right, here's what's cool. So I can go around, feed this one all the way to the ground. Okay, so this is on the ground. So I'm repelling off this one, right? So I'm going to tie an alpine butterfly right here. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to take this carabiner. I think a quickie is technically, a notch quickie is technically safer, but I feel it's safe enough with this. So now I'm going to cinch this down like that. Check it out. As I put weight on this, this is going to cinch. But when I get to the ground, I want to get my rope out. When I pull this, when I pull this one down, it's all, it all loosens up. So single line use only, but it's really slick because I can repel at any point in the tree, which is great because I wouldn't have made it all the way to the ground. I would have got stuck trying to double line down. I can't tie into this stub because then I'd have to leave the stub. The only other option is using a friction saver, which I don't really carry. I don't really like carrying that around. We're doing this. This works pretty good. All right, now I should be able to just pull this down. Bada bing, bada boom. What is this? A lanthus. A lanthus? It's considered like an invasive, uh, almost like a giant leaf. Dude, it's so weird looking. What color is it? Yellow. Yellow, wow. I'm colorblind, so I thought so. Weird. That looks so bizarre. Crazy looking. Man, I love birds. You gotta love birds, man. Love it. It's the only tree that does it that well, you know? So nuts. This birch is so strong. This whole thing is just suspended right here. Look at this. They, uh, these guys bring grass seed with them and they seed every time they make a divot or anything in the grass, they seed it afterwards. These guys have thought of all the tiniest details. Just a really impressive bunch of guys to work with. I, I'm not gonna be, they're actually coming back tomorrow to prune some more of these trees. I'm, not, I'm gonna be with Mike again tomorrow, I think. I'm not gonna be back at this job site, but it's looking pretty clean. Yeah, so I'm gonna end this video here. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed that. Yeah, please subscribe. Nice job today, Keith. Thanks, man. Nice job today, guys. Ended my video here. Yeah, yeah. nice work. Yeah, you too. Yeah, you too. All right. Yep.